Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Joni Young and I'm an acrylic artist and instructor. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to paint an eagle. So let's get started. I'm working on an 18 by 24 canvas. I've got a two and a half inch flat brush. The first thing I wanna do is get my canvas a little bit wet and then I'll go over all the colors. Getting the canvas wet first really helps to spread the paint around. You want to be able to work with your acrylics and your canvas. So getting the canvas wet really, really makes a huge difference. Okay, so before that can dry, I'll go over the colors quickly. I'll also have a full list below the video in the description. So burnt umber, dioxazine purple, phthalo blue, turquoise, burnt aqua green. We've got our neons here by Holbein. Neon yellow cool, warm, orange, pink, and violet. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to work on the sky and then it'll be down to about here. Then we're going to work on the water. So we're going to have the horizon lower in this painting because our eagle is going to be flying and just kind of coming up from the water. And we're going to be using a little bit of white to start and a little bit of the, the yellow, warm yellow. So I'm just going to pull this across, letting some areas have a little bit more color to them and some be a little bit softer. I'm going to just go right into that orange as well. We've got three colors, orange, yellow, and white. Bring this horizon down a little bit lower. You'll notice how sometimes I'm going up like that. That really helps to create a very pretty sky with a lot of movement. I'm gonna take more of that orange, a little bit of white, a little bit of that pink. Longer, bigger scoops. and really emphasize the movement and the direction going up to the top right. Then you can take your brush and make these wiggly squiggly lines, really fun. Okay, without washing my brush, I'm gonna take some white, a little bit of phthalo and purple. A little bit of the neon violet and I'm going to start from up here, pull, wiggles, and then we're going to make some smaller ones down here, start pulling across. The trick is to do this when the paint is still a little bit wet. You want to be a little bit more generous with your white. I'm choosing these colors because they're very complimentary. But see all the beautiful tones you can make? You get some of those in between smoky tones where the blue mixes in with all the other colors and the purple, of course. I'm going to come right down here, right down low, where our horizon is going to be. I'm going to switch brushes now. I'm going to go over to a number 30 filbert brush, and then I can uh, just add a few more details with a bit more control with this brush. So I'm going to take a little bit of white. And just softly come inside and we'll create some really nice light bluey gray colors in here. Okay, I'm going to go right over to that pretty violet. Isn't that pretty? Add 
add it right under this orange. And a very light, light pull like this. Without washing my brush off, I'm going to go into my blue and my turquoise and a bit of white. All these colors and just come right in with our water. work all these other colors that I used up here out of my brush. Now, to create a little bit of movement in the water, I'm going to do these little scoops. Almost like a crisscross, but I'm making slight little scoops, one off of another and so on and so on. Kind of looks like it's a weaved pattern. I'm gonna take some more white this time with my turquoise. And I'm just going to continue layering like this, sometimes using warm blue and sometimes using white with a turquoise. I'm just going to pull and slide and turn to load the tip of my brush up here. I'll come in with a little bit more and I'm even going to take I'll take a little bit of purple blue and teal or turquoise this is going to create a little bit more shadow so we can feel the movement of some gentle gentle waves I kind of wiggle and fan the brush out just to make it really narrow on the bottom like this. Okay, now I'm going to go into my white and the turquoise. Make it lighter back here.
I'm going to use one of my long liner brushes and I'm going to just take a little bit of white and well I've got a little bit of turquoise in there with some of these warmer colors and I'll just add some little peaks and highlights here reflecting the colors that we have up in the sky Just the same simple brush strokes. Sometimes shorter little uh, scoops and little crisscross types of scoops and then sometimes longer ones. Let's take a little bit of that pretty violet. And some more turquoise now. A little bit more of the blue and the purple. And another thing that I'm doing is I'm going to go slightly up and then down. Both colors. Again, up and then down. And you can concentrate on adding it right under your highlights. That'll really give you a 3D water look. And a little dab of each turquoise and blue. A little bit more of the turquoise. Back over to my liner brush. a little bit of pink along with those colors. Do the same thing but right above. And 
I'm just going to take a number 12 flat brush now, get it a little bit wet, go back to white and my violet, purple violet. And go right over the horizon again. Get it mixed up and then have a little bit on the very end of my brush. I'm going to take a little bit of this. I wouldn't normally use this brush, but I want to add some of this to the water as well. The next thing I want to do is use my one inch oval mop brush and I'm going to create a little bit more light softness so that our eagle really stands out. So I'm going to take some white and that pretty violet color. No water on my brush. I'm just going to start pushing gently and pushing gently on the side of my brush. Okay, I'm going to continue over to this side. I'm going to take a little bit of my blue okay, I'm going to need a little bit more white otherwise it's going to that's going to dry a little bit darker than I'd like it to I'm going to bring a little bit more heat with that orange down here. I think they look really nice together, that violet and, and that orange right above. More of the orange with the white. So I'm going to start with the wings first. And I'm going to take white, or a little bit of white, and that burnt umber. I'm just going to work on uh, the shape first. We'll add the first, the first wing here. We'll start with just a little ball and then a little triangle. I'm going to take a little bit of white and go inside that triangle. And then go around. around and pull about two and a half inches and then we're going to turn up take a little bit more of my brown here pull up and then we're going to curl start with one two one here Another one here, just slightly pulling. We'll have some feathers right about here. Where the other part of the wing starts. have another little one right there. Make it a little bit wider. And then some smaller ones here. And then just a little one right there. 
I'm going to gently push in. We use a little bit of white along with that. So then you can really see the feathers a lot better. And then I'll just like the shape comes across like this. It's going to follow this angle. And then go over where the leg is going to be and then the white tail feathers will be there. So I'm just going to take a little bit of white again. More brown. A little bit more white. It's going to be lighter here and then it'll be darker brown with that purple after. So it's a great brush to use for the feathers any size filbert brush that you want. Okay, and then we'll have the other wing underneath, right, part of the head and the body. So I'm just going to start that part right now. Add a little bit of purple. Take a scoop of the purple and the dark brown. And then it'll just be the beginning stages of that wing. Okay, now we're going to start this one. So we have a scoop right here. And then this is going to go over top and then up. Take a little bit of white. back to my burnt sienna or not burnt sienna um the burnt umber i gotta get used to using a different brown because you guys know i always use burnt sienna so sorry about that that being said you definitely could use uh burnt sienna i'm going to come around the edge here add some darker areas go up bring it down up Leave a little space, up again, and up just before it goes off the canvas, and then scoop. one's gonna this part of the wing is gonna come down a little bit lower
And we'll just take a little bit of that white again. That of course is not staying white, right? The idea is to have it pick up these other colors and blend in. Start with white. And I'm going to make a fan shape. We're going to bring it out straight underneath that other wing. Let the brush make the shapes for you of those feathers. So we'll have about four or five on this part and then one just goes straight out there. And then they're going to come up across like this. So we're going to go from underneath and pull up. And then right about here, we're going to stop. I'm going to take a little bit of a little bit of blue and purple more of the blue and add a shadow right in this these ones down here and the shadow of course is coming from the body well I've got this color Take a little bit of water on my brush. It's a little bit of purple and blue in there. A little bit more white. I'm going to come along the edge here. Start adding some feathers. These ones are going to be shorter. A little bit more water and some of the brown. We're just going to make a little highlight in between these. A little bit more white. And we'll get right in here. It starts to get a little bit darker down here. 
and they all kind of just start to blend into one another. I'm going to pull in a little bit of my phthalo because that's going to make it even darker. A little bit of the violet as well, that dries really dark. So we're going to curve inside here and go up. Okay, now with a clean brush, I'm going to take my purple and my burnt umber. Just gonna start coming in here, little dabs, pulling this way. And it comes down, chest, and then we'll have a big looking, it's like a turkey looking like. <laughs> Can't believe how big eagles are. We're lucky here. Um, well, anywhere I've been, uh, I've grown up, grew up in the Rockies, and we had lots, or have lots of eagles there. So I saw them quite often. Just taking a little bit of white and mixing that in. There's a little hint of that purple and blue with that brown. Uh, we saw so many eagles on a daily basis. One I had, I was down at the river, and one came and swooped down right above my head in front of me down and caught a fish, and it was amazing. I mean, I always knew that they were big, but it was bigger than I thought. I'm just going to go around, make sure that's nice and dark, and then right in here, we're going to start the leg. The darker part but the feathers that I painted are still wet underneath so that's why uh, I'm not able to get the dark color that I want yet but we are getting the shape of the leg so that's all we need to worry about right now and then once it's dry we can come in after so it stops there and then we have the yellow talons And then of course the other one is underneath right here and then that comes down to right about there hope you guys are all enjoying this video so far and getting inspired I'm going to take a little bit of my orange with my brown here, mix those up. And I'm going to start right here on the edge, pull. So we have a nice highlight. A little bit more white this time. A few little feathers by the neck and the head. Now by tapping like this, you can get start to get a feel for those feathers in the pattern. Take a little bit more white. And from this side, add some more of that 
light orange, brown, and white. Okay, I'm going to make that really dark, beautiful color again, staying away from black. And if, if you guys like black, if that's your thing, that's totally fine. Go ahead and use it. I like to use, I like to make a really dark color with other colors to make the darkest color in my paintings. Just going to come down here, slightly outline that above, gently pull across. We're just slowly going to start building up our highlights and shadows. And then round it out there. Now another great brush for this step would be uh, the angle brush. Or the dagger brush. But if you flatten your filbert out like this, you can make it really narrow and uh, be able to use it. Okay, continuing over on this side for our shadows, darkest contrast. I'm going to come right above, I've got two layers here. underneath there. A little scoop and pull. I'm just going to go into a little bit of white and blue and I'm going to add a little line like that. I'm going to need just a little bit more white to make that show up. Very gentle scoop. 
I'm saying um, this layer right here. So you really want to line it up, have your, your brush kind of flat. back into my dark colors I'm just going to come over here and add little dabs little dabs we don't have to make a lot of detail just just a suggestion of some more feathers okay I'm going to use a uh, number two liner brush now I'm going to take some white and just going to come around and make little V's. Okay, just a little V like that, and that's the end of those feathers. I think instead of just using straight white, let's tint it with some turquoise. And then wherever we have those light lines again, we'll go over them. And a little bit underneath. I think that just looks prettier than using straight white. Soften. You can use another brush to soften or this liner one. <laughs> I always tend to go and just use my finger because I know the acrylic paint dries fast and it's handy just to do that and they'll just scumble it a little bit like that. Okay, the next thing I want to do is go with a clean brush into my dark colors again and I'm going to outline. Uh, the next set. I'm going to start right up here with that. Just those big ones up here. And they have a little I don't know if you guys notice that if you look really close up they have a little bit of bumps here for the other feathers but I'm just gonna leave them I'll, I'll leave that one like that and then the rest of them without I'm going to outline the next set here. So we've got the dark here, and we've got another set of feathers. So I'm just going to go and do those kind of V shapes again, or just outline. And then they just get lost right in here. I start to kind of go into that area that we can't really tell them apart. I'm going to switch over to my round brush. 
I've got a number two round brush. I'm gonna get it a little bit wet, and I'm gonna soften. Oops, I need a little bit more paint. Soften the tops of these feathers. And they gradually get a little bit fuller and thicker until, or darker, until they meet down there. Now I'm going to go back in to my dark colors, or make that dark color, violet, purple, blue, and burnt umber. And pull this row out wider. come around and add little tiny scoops do a little scoop around there to outline that And then it's going to be darker right about there. We'll eventually give him a head and <laughs> face. We're getting there, guys. I'm going to lighten this up with some orange and some white. Now we've got some light right about there. And then more right here. So we'll just round that out. And then little taps and dabs. Be a little bit more generous with your highlights right here at the top. Before I forget, I'm going to take my dark brown. Go over those and then kind of outline that there. Then I'll go back to my light colors. A little bit more on the, the orange side here. So right about here is where we're going to have our head. Straight and then round. And then it meets down here. I'm going to come in with my white. Got quite a bit of white on here. It comes up just a little bit higher. Let's 
so the hair just comes down, the white part anyways, comes down a little bit lower right there. And our beak. Now the next thing I'm going to do is outline in dark, my dark, dark colors here. Can't forget that violet, it makes such a big difference. So I'm just going to kind of tap around here. Then we can go over with white after. just want to get the basic shape. Okay, I'm going to add some more white right in here for the feathers. We'll wait for his head to dry. And then there's some other like little feathers right about here. I'm going to tint some of the white a little bit so that we have um, a little bit of depth in these and they don't look completely flat. We want to make them stand out so there's a little hint of this kind of tan color. And then I'll just make it a little bit darker on the top of this one. Bring that white in front of this feather goes in front of that wing. Another little feather right there. A little bit of a shadow right in here inside. And I've got that blue under remember for the shadows, but I want to make these feathers show up and not look see through. I'm going to go back over to my orange while I've got that white on there. And add a little indication of some. It's far away, like we're not going to see all the patterns on everything, but there's a little bit more going on there than just a straight full on color. And a little bit more white. It keeps wanting to dry a little bit darker. But you know, acrylic does that, so it's to be expected and it's it's normal. Even when you um, take the time to prep your canvas. I know they come prepped and primed already, but I always recommend um, using a bit of gesso. I'm gonna just add another highlight here. 
little bit more of the orange. Some, it's a little bit more warm. His feathers right there. Okay, and then we're gonna have a little bit of a shadow. Just a little bit of a shadow right in here where his head, part of his face kind of goes in a little bit and then underneath. Is all those little feathers. Pull it in towards that one leg and then we're going to come down here and continue with those little dabs. Okay, now I'm going to take my yellow, orange, and some white. Start working on his talons. So I'm just going to do a little curve over like that and then it's going to be a little bit darker in the back because they're curled over and he's got a fish that he's just picked, scooped up. Then we're going to do make a little curl like that and it's going to come down lower. I'm going to outline, pull this down a little bit lower, some little feathers. And then it comes down and around like this. Now I'm going to do a layer of white so that when I add my yellow, my bright yellow, it really shows up. We've got a fish just indicate a little fish here. Add a little bit of white. There's a little bit of teal in there too. And there's a lot of splash going on because he's just scooped it up. So just taking a little bit of white and tapping for that spray. I'm probably going to use um, a little bit of my toothbrush to create some spray as well. Okay, 
I'm just going to go back over to my little liner brush. And I'm going to create little V's here for his, the shape of the white on his head feathers. Take my orange and my yellow, a little bit of white, and we'll start his beak up here, have it kind of get lost in the fur and his feathers on his face. Gonna have a bit of a shadow. We need a little bit of purple, blue, brown, and orange. Underneath there, a little bit above. We're going to add a darker triangle right there. And then that bright yellow. And we'll add our yellow. It's still pretty, pretty wet there. shadow in here. I'm going to use my liner brush and I'm going to start with a little bit of purple, my blue and purple. Got a little line like this. Then a little triangle. Little circle. With a darker outline. Then I'm going to add the white. Then a little dab for the eye. I'm going to add a few more uh, dabs of water here. And it's really splashing. There's a whole bunch going on. Right in here. I'm going to take my toothbrush now and create that spray effect of fine, more of a fine mist. And just get a little bit of white to get the water on there. And then I'm going to turn it over, place my thumb here. And add a little spray like that. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit of my blue and white 
a little bit of purple. Maybe just a little bit more white in there. I don't want to have too much paint on my brush. And I'm going to start adding a little bit of color here. Oh, I'm going to go into my violet too. Mix that in. here like this. This is what I like to do uh, near the end of a painting. I like to come in and really add some finishing touches with some fun colors. Okay, with those same colors. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of white with my brown because there's a few feathers that come down here. There we go. A little bit more white. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my yellows here. Maybe even a little bit of, a little bit of blue in here for the shadow under here. Back a little bit of that right around there. And I'll soften again with some white so that it doesn't dry too dark. I'm going to go into my not yellow warm. Add some white. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a final spray, have a little bit more coming up here. And I could keep going, I'm having so much fun with this, but I'm gonna call this one done. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and following along. And let me know in the comments below, give this video a like, and if you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and do that. I'll see you guys all soon in another video. Bye.